how do you play a part in, in taking a Foster the People buzz, right, that started on their own, turned down by everybody? How do you assist now um, in getting them to the next rung up the ladder, where they get on radio and they get on TV shows and they get the big tours? I think a big uh, change that, that's happened for me personally as an agent, um, I, I will get involved very, very early on. Um, and, boy, I mean, 10 years ago, I would book a band that I had never seen that was from another country. Um, they, you know, these groups would call me up or, and say, hey, we want you to book us. And I couldn't afford to fly like halfway around the world to see these bands. I, knew, I had their music. I would talk to friends in those, in those cities to, who told me they were great live. And I said, okay, let's do it. And I probably did that 50 times. And I never really had a band that ended up not being very good live. Now, um, we pick up bands so early, be often before they've played a show, or maybe after they've played like 10 shows. And our role as an agent is different in the beginning. It used to be just, let's, let's, let's just book shows. Um, uh, let's book them in New York and stuff and get and in L.A. and get people to pay attention to them. Now, bands will put out like one or two songs. Pitchfork can pick it up, and it could be like a huge phenomenon around the world. And they've never played a, sh a show, or nor do they have 30 minutes of music. So we kind of help them. Um, well, once they have like a set, they can play. We book them shows in secondary markets, tertiary markets, where... Every blogger in the business, uh, every hipster who, who's going to have an opinion that, and make, it, make their opinion known doesn't come to see them. And the band kind of gets their chops playing. Um, they do that and then they rehearse in a garage or a practice space or something. And we kind of like let the, the bubble that is, is created around the band, around these songs they're putting on the internet, let that continue to build. But don't like play hot show in in LA for the whole business to come down and say those guys sucked live yeah um, once that happens then you're set back a little bit mm -hmm. um, and you got to kind of let that bubble grow again and mm -hmm. we prefer to uh, let them get their chops in secondaries and tertiaries and then, and then make a big impact in LA or New York I got a couple questions from a manager's perspective First, you know, when you've got a band that's brand new, that's not getting airplay, that's, that's operating under the radar of, of the mainstream of the business, how the heck do you get them gigs in major markets, much less secondary markets? And, and second, second question is, when you're dealing with young bands this early on in the process, inevitably they're going to come with an inexperienced manager, which would seem to put more of a burden on you guys as agents. How do you handle those? How do you make it happen? One of the fundamental things about how I choose bands, uh, which bands I work with. I book bands I like. Um, so I call up clubs in secondary markets and I've been working with these people for a very long time. A lot of them are friends of mine. They also like music. And I say, here, here's a new band I'm really excited about, I really believe in, help me get them a show. Um, maybe they open for one of my bands, maybe not. You know, These are people I've done a lot of shows with and they do it. Um, Often because, you know, the band's really good. Mm -hmm. It's just early. Um, so, yeah, I just call people up. And but a lot of it's got to be down to relationships. We talk about this a lot. You know, people are, that are struggling to figure out how to start. But you got to go out and meet people. Yeah. And then when you meet people in the music, because you've been doing this a while now. I've been doing it forever. If you do right by people and, and you, you do what you say you're going to do, uh, because so often people don't do that in the music business, I find that the people that actually do what they say they're going to do get credibility and you get opportunities when it's a flip of the coin. I imagine they're not paying tons of money on these gigs at this yeah, point. It's yeah. mostly giving them a slot. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with the young managers or the inexperienced um, managers? I guess a few years ago I realized at that point, I've been doing this 18 years, um, I, I have... I've been doing this a long time, uh, and if there is a young manager, they're really looking to, to me to really provide strategy on how to develop the live side of things. And uh, more often than, than in the past, they're asking me questions about other sections of a band's career. You know, which publicists should we work with? What do you think about these record companies? How should we go, get, uh, go about getting interest? What should we do at South By? You know, they're really looking to me as a place to get some advice. Uh, and I imagine they're getting advice from other people too, but I'm happy to share it. 
Well, I think it's awesome that you do that because um, you know it, it's this whole idea of mentoring people and finding ways to get up to speed. It's difficult. The business, you know, was never great at that, and so I'm happy you're here today because we can do a little sharing.